We're here with perhaps library system's most famous employee, Raymond Goslow. Raymond, congratulations. There was a proclamation for you before the board this morning uh, about your exploits on Jeopardy and certainly with all you do in the library system. Um, I guess you're getting a lot of notoriety for that. I think so. It's really taken a lot out of me the past few weeks, just uh, staying up late answering all these messages. Like, I'm glad it's happened, but I'm glad I'll be glad when I can kind of go back to normal. So how did the Jeopardy journey begin? So I've been watching Jeopardy pretty much my whole life. I don't remember a life without Jeopardy, but this specific tournament, my journey began when I took the uh, online college anytime test. It was a test I could just take on the Jeopardy website. They t offered me questions from a test bank, and uh, I only had 15 seconds to answer each question, so it was a very fast-paced affair. Um, after passing that, a few weeks later, they invited me to take another similar test over Zoom, and that way they could make sure I wasn't uh, looking up answers on one computer while answering them on the other. Uh, and then after I proved that I did, in fact, have the knowledge to go on the show, they invited me to a uh, audition over Zoom where I played a mock version of the game and uh, just showed off a bit of my personality. And at that point, uh, I had already shown I had the knowledge to be on the show, so really personality and camera presence were the big deciding factor there. And a few months later, I, did, I in fact got the call saying, we want to have you on the show. So how did you get into the National Collegiate Championship Tournament with Kennesaw State? So my uh, college career, I was homeschooled all the way through the end of high school. I went to uh, Chattahoochee Tech for a year or so to uh, get my core classes out of the way, and then I transferred to KSU. So I've been, uh, I was a student at uh, KSU for a couple of years leading up to this uh, tournament. And the test that I took to get on Jeopardy was a specifically college championship test. So when I did my test and then my proctored test and then my audition, it was all with other college students. I wasn't mixed in the general field of adult Jeopardy auditioners. And so I knew that I was auditioning for this special opportunity of the tournament the whole way along, which made it a special like chance for me. A little bit of pressure though, representing all of KSU in something like this. It really was in a way because I wasn't just representing KSU. I was representing like all the lesser known state schools across the country. The vast majority of schools in this tournament were Ivy League schools, private schools, schools that were well known for their sports teams. And KSU just isn't that well known across the country. And so there were all these other people who around the country who probably went to their state school were hoping to see it in the tournament and didn't. And I felt like I was carrying a lot of their expectations as well. And I hope based on my performance, I did them proud. But it was definitely more than just KSU and Cobb County. It was a nationwide affair kind of for me. You did. I was at an event a couple of days after the final. And uh, one of the speakers was from KSU. And that's the first thing he mentioned. He goes, one of our alums just did us proud on, on Jeopardy. <laughs> so they... You were definitely a topic of conversation. So when you when you do the auditions and all that Zoom stuff, that's one thing. But actually going out there, that's got to be a whole different set of stress. Absolutely. Um, they did a really good job of just making us feel at home, making us feel like we belonged for this special tournament event. They covered our airfare and hotel and such. So it really felt like we were getting the VIP treatment, the crew of the show, you know, treated us like the talent, you know, you know, because we were, we were the the onstage presence. We were the people they brought in to represent colleges from across the nation. And so the biggest stress for me was just waiting because it took multiple days to film this tournament. Um, I didn't get to film my first game until the second day, so I spent a whole day waiting and then part of another day. And as soon as I got told I was going to be in the next game, then that then it just became excitement. I was excited to compete. But up until that point when I didn't know when I was going to compete or how it was going to go, that was definitely stressful waiting. So you said we. Did they allow, allow you to take anybody out with you? No, they didn't allow us. But I, when I say we, I'm talking about like the other college other contestants because so we really bonded as a group and got close as a group. But you were there from KSU on your own. Yes, I was on my own. Yeah. And then uh, you mentioned that there's – you don't just jump into the game. There's some prep that leads up to it out there. Mm -hmm. We spent, before we filmed the tournament itself, we spent a whole day in the studio just uh, getting used to being on stage, 
um, holding the buzzer and buzzing in with the right timing, taking pictures, like getting our makeup done and taking pictures that would be posted um, for social media promotion and stuff like that. So by the time it came around actually time to compete, we'd spent a whole day in the studio already. So a lot of that nervousness of just being in the studio for the first time had long since dissipated. Now, did they have a studio audience in there? No, there was no designated audience. The other competitors got to watch, and the crew were in the audience area as well. So when the stage manager said, okay, everybody applaud, the lights are coming down, the applause that we got felt no different than it would have with an actual studio audience. So, so I've seen enough Jeopardy to know that a lot of the key to success is the the clicker. So how how what is the key to success, and then how did you get locked in on that? So there are kind of two ways to adjust to the buzzer on Jeopardy. What you see at home is you see a board full of clues, but what you don't see is that in the studio, that board full of clues has two lines of lights going down the side. And when those lights flash on at the end of the clue, that's the sign your buzzer is now available to buzz in. And if you buzz in just a little early, you get locked out for a quarter of a second. So buzzing in not too early is key. Uh, some people, so the, the two methods that people use, some people will wait till they see the light and just try to buzz in, and others will try to use the host's voice and like when they say the last syllable to kind of anticipate the light turning on before it actually turns on. I mainly use just watch the light, just trust my reaction time, I see the light, I buzz in. Um, that worked pretty well for me most of the time, but really it's split second differences that can determine the difference between who gets in and who doesn't. In my first two games, which I was pretty much the dominating force on the buzzer, I was getting in about 60% of the time that I tried to buzz in. And then meanwhile, in the final, I was only getting in about 40% of the time, which is not that big of a difference number-wise, but it was the difference between me running away with the victory and someone else running away with the victory. So it's fractions of a second. So you're from Kennesaw State. You mentioned a lot of other of the students were there from bigger schools and Ivy League schools. Did you ever get the sense they thought they'd be able to run you right over before the games? No, not at all. We really got to know each other as people, not as the schools on our sweatshirts. And so I didn't realize quite at the time, like, the impact that me going up against Georgetown and Harvard and defeating them would have and, like, the how much that would resonate with people. Because I was just thinking of myself as a competitor the contestant from Georgetown as a competitor, the contestant from Harvard as a competitor. And so I wasn't really thinking about the people as representatives of schools because we all got to know each other so well. We got to go out to dinner after filming and stuff like that. Um, and they never looked at me like a country bumpkin or anything <laughs> either. So it was a very welcoming, friendly environment. So you go through the tournaments and you mentioned there's a lot of downtime and then there's some games. And then obviously when it's over, you know what happened but nobody else does. So how does that work? So it was definitely something that I had to keep secret um, for a long time, and it was kind of difficult. But they have a perfect system set up to make sure you don't tell anyone anything. Um, you don't get the check until after your game airs. And so if you break the, uh, the contract by revealing the results or saying anything they don't want you to, that's the the stick that they can hold out and say, you know, you know, we're not going to write you the check. So that was uh, a strong motivating force. But what was really hard for me was not necessarily hiding how I did, but hiding that I was a part of the tournament at all, because I was not allowed to talk about that until only about two weeks before my game aired. And so I couldn't even start telling people, like, watch me on Jeopardy on this day. Once I could finally reveal that, I knew, like, how I did is going to come out eventually, but it was really hard just not telling people that I was a part of the tournament at all because I knew people would be so excited to hear that. I didn't even ask you, when did you tape this? How long ago was it? It was taped the week before Thanksgiving. So it was taped in November and uh, obviously a three-month delay before everyone found wow. out how it turned out in February when it aired. Wow, that's that that's a lot of pressure. I don't know if I could keep that all bottled <laughs> in. Do you do you know if anybody else let anything slip, or did, was everybody good? Um, from browsing the internet, I didn't see any spoilers on the internet. So if anyone told like their uh, close friends and family, nobody uh, nobody let it slip on the internet. So this is an experience that you're going to remember for the rest of your life, no doubt. I mean, it's it's a, a hugely popular show. What what do you what do you take out of the experience? Mm, so going forward, like. It definitely felt like 
a once in a lifetime experience. Like it didn't feel real at all until I got back home and could see myself on TV. Like I came home and while I had to keep it a secret, like it did, it still didn't feel real. And so going forward, like just the crazy amount of support that I've gotten, the recognition that I've gotten, the people who found my personality and my intelligence admirable. I think that's the biggest thing I'm going to take out is just recognizing that like people have recognized these good qualities in me and it's not just like a made for TV thing and just know, knowing that like that is who I am and it came across well on TV without having to fake it or anything. That gives me a lot of confidence in just being myself. Having gone through the games and then watching them on TV, did anything surprise you about how it was presented on TV compared to what actually happened in the studio? So I managed to surprise myself. There were multiple answers in my games where I'm watching at home or my watch party or whatever, and I'm like, I have no idea what this is. And then I see myself on the TV buzz in and get it correct. <laughs> Because I, I, it clearly means I must have just been in the zone while I was there. I was able to pull knowledge out of my head. I, I peaked at the right time. Um, so in terms of what happened, like, that was something that kind of surprised me. Because I, being on stage, it's so much of a blur. Like, I didn't remember half the daily doubles that I answered, let alone, like, the normal <laughs> clues. So I think they presented it pretty much how it happened. But I definitely had forgotten some of what had actually happened. <laughs> So you and I first met a couple of years ago down at the South Cobb Library. You're working now over at Schweitzer just down the street? Yep, that's right. So what's next for Raymond Goslow? So a lot of people have been asking me that. They're asking, like, you know, with the $100,000, you know, are you going to go off to great, bigger things? And to that I say uh, it's a great um, amount of money to have volunteer that, but it's not enough to retire on. So <laughs> I uh, really appreciate the work that I do here for Cobb County Library and the work that I do in the community, and I'm Glad to uh, keep doing that as my line of work for the foreseeable future. First video I did on you, I had to do with the Rubik's Cube. Are you still doing that? I am. I still go to competitions. Uh, COVID has made it that the demand to compete in competitions is so high compared to the low number of slots that we can offer people due to social distancing and that. So the in the Rubik's Cube community, that's the challenge we're dealing with, is just trying to deal with the really high demand. And, and, and I've seen you at a couple of the food distribution events the library's put on. It seems like something you enjoy doing. Yes, absolutely. Just what I always say about the library is that it's not just a place that supports the community. It's a place that creates the community. And so events like food distribution and other things that the library does to bring people together are just what I'm really passionate about. Well, congratulations on finishing second in the national tournament, collegiate tournament. And getting the, the board recognition this morning. And uh, I'm sure since we've met so many times <laughs> in Cobb County, we shall meet again. So. Yes. Thank you so much. And we certainly shall. All right. Thanks, Raymond.